All right, new year, new video. Gotta do something cool for the intro. Let's see. Courtroom drama, William Shatner. I got it! DJ, cue the music. Enterprise is docked at a starbase for repairs after an ion storm ravaged the ship. Because of the storm, Kirk was forced to jettison a research pod with a crew member still inside, Ben Finney, a longtime acquaintance of Kirk's. Finney's body was never recovered. Finney's daughter Jamie, who is named after Jim, angrily accuses Jim of killing Finney on purpose. At the same time, Spock arrives with some information from the ship's logs that shows that Jim ejected the pod with no warning, without allowing Finney any time to escape, meaning that Kirk perjured his report and that he really may have killed Finney on purpose, or at least through gross negligence. See, they think Kirk did it, but they just can't prove it. A while later, Kirk and Bones go to 10 forward- yeah, I know, 10 forward is TNG, ask me if I give a f- Walter, where Jim is greeted pretty coldly by some old acquaintances from the Academy, who believe the rumors that Jim killed Finney on purpose. After Finney leaves, a woman comes in and Bones tries to hit on her until he finds out she's a real Shaw, one of Jim's exes. And as Barney Stinson taught us all, your bro's exes are off limits. All of my old friends look like doctors. All of his look like you. Poor Bones, he can never catch a break with the ladies, can he? Either they're secretly salt-sucking ghouls, or they're in a cult, or James, Tom, Cat, and Kirk's gotten to him first. Anyway, Jim meets with Commodore Stone, who reveals that even though he and Finney were once good friends, their relationship had curdled some years earlier while working together on another starship. Jim had discovered a deadly mistake that Finney had made and had reported it, getting Finney in serious trouble with the brass. Don't you know that snitches get stitches, Jimothy? Because you're never too young to learn our national no-snitching policy. Stone tries to convince Kirk to accept a plea of culpability and voluntarily step down from his captaincy, but Kirk refuses, maintaining that he did everything right. Stone has no choice but to put Kirk on trial. Later, Jim meets up with Ariel and gets flirtatious, but as it turns out, Ariel just so happens to be opposing counsel on Kirk's trial. Ariel's clearly distraught at the prospect of having to prosecute Jim, as she is sworn to do her very best to see him punished to the highest extent and discharged from Starfleet. You know, I'm clearly not a lawyer, but even I know there's a conflict of interest when it comes to opposing counsel being the defendant's ex-girlfriend. However, Ariel tries to help Kirk by referring him to an attorney, the eccentric Samuel T. Cogley Esquire, played by Wilmer from the Maltese Falcon. What's the matter? Don't you like folks? Oh, I like them fine. But a computer takes less space. Kirk's a Kindle bitch, I guess. The trial proceeds and Kirk pleads not guilty for killing Finney. Shaw calls Spock, who swears that despite all the evidence, against all logic, it is impossible that Kirk made a mistake. You don't have all the facts. Which are? I love him. Oh, How far has it gone? The prosecution continues, which ends with Cogley bringing Kirk to the stand to speak for himself. Kirk maintains that he did everything right and that given the opportunity to go back and do it over, he would do exactly what he did before. However, Shaw presents footage from the ship's computer that shows Kirk indeed jettisoning Finney's pod before Red Alert. But that's not the way it happened. The court takes a recess and even Cogley is beginning to doubt Kirk. And since I'm incredibly mature, I won't play the Freudian parts of their conversation. Oh, who am I kidding? I've never been mature in my life. I could get you off. You can pull out if you want to. <laughs> Jamie comes to Kirk's quarters to speak to him in Cogley, unusually calm and forgiving, unlike the first time we saw her. She says that she knows now that her father's death couldn't be Kirk's fault and begs them to change Jim's plea so that he'll get a lighter sentence. Cogley looks like he suddenly has an idea. It didn't make it into the final cut of the episode, but in the script it was shown that Jamie discovered her father's plot against Kirk while reading some old letters from him. Uh, Bill, can you stop touching her? Step away from the underage girl. Meanwhile, Bones comes into the rec room to find Spock and is like, Bro, the f Jim's on trial for murder and you're playing chess and Spock is like, I can't talk right now. I'm doing hot girl sh Spock says that he's been playing chess against the ship's computer and that he's won four times in a row. And since it's supposed to be impossible to win against the computer, it proves there's something wrong with it. Which is enough reasonable doubt against the ship's records to clear Jim's name. In light of this new evidence, the court reconvenes on the Enterprise where Cogley figures out that Finney, being the records officer, must have tampered with the computer and furthermore is likely still alive and hiding somewhere on the ship. Having staged his 
own death to destroy Kirk's career. They manage to sniff him out of engineering, and Finney reveals to Kirk that he's sabotaged the Enterprise, the one thing most precious to Kirk, so that it will crash into the base and kill everyone on both the ship and the base, as retribution for denying him a captaincy. Jim informs Finney that Jamie's on the ship and that he'll be killing his own daughter in the process. Then, Finney and Kirk's stunt doubles get into a fight, and Kirk is able to incapacitate him. Finney admits to Kirk how he sabotaged the ship, and Kirk saves the Enterprise just in time. Finney is taken away by the authorities, and Kirk is cleared of all charges. Jim and Ariel leave with a fond farewell, with Ariel saying she's glad she lost the case. She's a very good lawyer. Obviously. Indeed she is. <laughs> There are some who have suggested that Court Martial was based on the Sherlock Holmes story The Adventure of the Norwood Builder, in which a man fakes his own death and frames another man with whom he has a grudge against for his murder, only to be discovered by Holmes and Watson to be hiding within the walls of a house. I would love for Legal Eagle to do a review of this episode because, egads, I may not be a lawyer, but even I can see there are some serious flaws in this trial. Like, how is Cogley not calling a objection here when Shaw is blatantly leading the witness? Looking past the legal inaccuracies, however, I think this episode is watchable enough. It's not nearly as engaging as The Enemy Within or Arena, because after all, not a one of us believed that Kirk actually killed Finney, but Finney's plan to discredit Kirk is fairly clever. It's too bad Arthur Conan Doyle came up with it first. And Shaw is by far one of the most likable of Kirk's one-episode lady loves. She's not as well-known as, say, Edith Keeler, but I appreciate the fact that she's an actual person with layers. But I think if there's one thing we can take from all this is that... Paper books are overrated. Just buy a fucking Kindle. Don't make me fire you. You can't fire me. Don't make me pre-fire you. You wouldn't dare. Watch this. You're pre-fired. And when I'm promoted, you'll be full fired. If you get promoted. And if you haven't fallen in love with me by then. What So, Mr. Argitakos, this alleged affair with Ms. Wyndham has been going on for... Two years. And your first name again is? Nikos. And your boyfriend's name is? Carlos. <gasps> I, I, sorry, I misunderstand. You say boyfriend, I thought you say best friend. Carlos is my best friend. You bastard! You lying bastard!